Like at, at some point you get back, like when you're programming, you're like, I'm typing kind of in English. I'm like, computer, do this. And the computer's like, okay, master. And you're like, I'm so smart. No, you're not. You just typed what to do and the thing did it. At some level, there was a dude that was like, he's taking your instructions and he's turning it into ones and zeros that the computer can understand. But how does the computer know what to do with the ones and zeros, man? It's just rocks. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, launch me again. Like you actually have to be a wizard, I think, to understand that level of computing. Like I'm starting to think that this Alan Turing guy was like really smart. Dude legitimately cracked like the Nazi code, the computer the size of a damn like cruise ship. Dude was just putting glass jars into it and then being like, look, come back in 300 days. Let's see if this one worked. <laughs> Dude's, hmm, to crack this. Can you imagine? Oh, how do we crack this code? Here's what we're going to do. Here's, here's 64 glass jars. Let's put them in. Shovel some coal into the motherfucker and then come back in two days. This shit probably spat out like a, a 300 character alphanumeric string and then they needed like another genius to look at it and be like, no, 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 this isn't quite right. That's crazy, man. And I know how he feels because this is the perfect name, the bald scholars. I'm also being persecuted for my radical genius. I'm talking about piss and shit and cum and people are like, shut up or I'm gonna beat you up. And I'm like, I don't know how to be anything else. This is just how I am. And you're, you're basically saying completely change who you are as, at a fundamental level or we're gonna fight you. Come on, man. You basically got it. I'm not saying I'm as smart as Alan Turing. But I'm saying he's anal his computational genius is analogous to my scatological humor acumen, okay? I would never debase Alan Turing and compare us. I would simply say that in two very specific domains, we are equals. It is kind of crazy Tesla invented a different kind of electricity. I don't know anything about alternating current versus direct current. Who tells the electrons whether they're AC or DC? Like, are there AC electrons and DC electrons? Or is it based on, like, the rifling of the, of the tube, of the cable? Who tells the river to flow? Poseidon? I know that one. Don't you have a bio degree? You should know this. I don't know. They didn't teach us this shit at all. They taught us how to use micro pipettes and say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 200 more grams of agar on the plate. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So, yes, sir. What is a eukaryote? What is, what is gram-positive bacteria? Yeah, plus I did graduate like 13 years ago. I probably remembered 20% of my education like a year after I graduated. It has not gone up since then. <laughs> You gotta at least consider a leech. You don't have to take it, but you gotta consider it. Back in my day, you could go to prison for testing positive for a gram. So true. One of the hardest rap lines in history. It's kind of crazy, like, our brain has electricity in it, too. 
Well, like our whole body. Like that shit was not invented by Ben Franklin. Adam was out here with the voltage, you know, in his cerebellum. But if you add more electricity, you die. I know it's fucked up, man. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right. If anything, we should just get like smarter <laughs> and stronger. Come on. Is this turn four? You can't get shit on turn four. What are we doing here? You could run Koala? You could run Koala. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. Leagues today, Pharaoh? Maybe I should get really into old school RuneScape. It kind of, I feel like I understand Chibli so much more after watching him play um, OSRS Guesser, which is Geo Guesser, but they show you a screenshot from RuneScape and you pick where on the RuneScape map it is. And the dude was literally 5,000, 5,000, like perfect score, perfect score, perfect score, perfect score, perfect score every single time in less than one minute for five total guesses. Like it, it was the almost the best I've ever seen anybody be at anything. He is the rainbow of OSRS guesser. Yes, if he is to OSRS guesser what Alan Turing is to inventing the first computer. That's damn true. Maybe this is not a leech run. Maybe it looks more like this. Money Colin, hang on, I gotta get this. Is this shit funny in Canada? <laughs> it's like the most devastating comment I've ever gotten. Holy, hang on. I respect it, but I am going to bring up your profile. Bob, not a builder. Let's see. Following for six years, 600 messages in chat. Let's see, but is this, this could be when you like, cause sometimes people watch for like five years and then they think that I've changed and that makes them mad, but actually like they're dealing with something in their personal life that's causing it to spill over. Let me see. No, well, you were leaving some messages in July. Some messages about SAP. Dude, I was watching on mute WTF, this guy going on about. I had a flawless, my best unit was a mosquito. It just seems like a fairly normal chatter, except for when I was streaming with AOC. But I mean, the pandemic was a different time, you know? I'm not gonna hold anybody responsible for what they were saying during the pandemic necessarily. If they're still saying it now, like you really gotta sort that shit out. But kind of everyone went a little bit crazy. It only seemed to slip into a state of permanent insanity for like 15% of the population forever. Let me see here. You seem okay. In which case, I'm going to hit you with the plus two. I think you've devastated me with your comment, and I respect that. Is this shit funny in Canada? It's great, too, because Canadians love to be like, oh, we have a great sense of humor. Mike Myers, Jim Carrey came from here. And then the best show in Canadian history, the most popular show in Canadian history. Shit's Creek. Make it make sense. No, Shit's Creek is good. I've never seen it. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just trying to cause problems. I will say, uh, our mortgage broker sent us a Schitt's Creek themed Christmas card with two lottery tickets inside of it and said, Merry Christmas, wouldn't it be nice if you won the lottery and didn't have to pay the rest of your mortgage off? And I was like, that's cute. But then I thought, they're going to be pissed if I win like $117 million in the lottery. 
But then they were like scratch tickets, but then we scratched the tickets and we won nothing. And I said, let that be a lesson for you kids. Do not buy scratch lottery tickets. <laughs> it was not fun. Uh, it, it sucked completely. I had to go find a coin to scratch it because if you scratch it with your fingernail, you get the weird dust under your fingernail that never leaves. Like you could take 10 showers and it, it'll still be there until like the atoms just naturally decay. Um, and then I scratch. The games aren't fun. Like every single one is just like, if you get three of a thing, you win the thing. It's not like there's any gameplay. And then like it makes dust that you got to sweep off of your tablecloth and then I just throw them in the trash. Because I didn't win anything. We out here scratching a ticket with a toonie. Listen, it was a quarter. But still. This happens in the courts all the time. A lottery ticket given as a gift also transfers ownership of winnings. I mean, that's the way it should be. You shouldn't be buying people lottery tickets and then getting mad if they win. If you're mad that someone won the lottery, you should just tape a loony to the inside of the card instead. If you wanted to just give them something worth a dollar, just put some currency in it. Some of this. Honestly, I don't know. You, you kind of make sense like this for now. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. You don't really make sense. You make sense. That being said, it would fuck with me if I bought someone a lottery ticket and then they won like a billion dollars. I would expect, maybe it's not fair. It's so funny that this is the kind of thing that we concern ourselves with. Literally like, a, it's, I don't even buy lottery tickets so the chances of this happening are literally zero. But even if I did, the chances of it happening are like one in four billion or something like that. But I don't care who you are. If I buy you a lottery ticket and you win a billion dollars, you should break me off 10 mil. Although I gave it to you as a gift, you would not have gotten it were it not for me. You, could, you can't spare 10 milli out of your billy. You've become like the 3,000th richest person on the world overnight and now you're, now you're cheap. I saw you paying nine bucks to get three shrimp on top of your steak at the keg two months ago. But now that you got a billion dollars, you're like, oh, things are a little tight lately. I'm not that liquid. The phantom tax. Yeah. If, I, if you win a billion dollars off my lottery ticket, I'm, ta I'm, gonna, I'm hoping you're going to respect the phantom tax. That's all I'm going to say. Like if Malf got, well, it's funny though. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm imagining Malf winning the lottery off of a ticket I bought him. I'm like, he'd break me off. And then I was thinking like, what if I won the lottery on a ticket he bought me? I'd be like, I'd probably break him off, but he better be on his best behavior because that's my ticket, legally speaking. <laughs> I'll break him off, but like he better not act entitled about it or because speaking that's my 649 winning so I'm just joking I'd break him off Malf if you're here I'd break you off a piece of that but the real question this is where things because I like to get into the hard questions what is the lowest level or actually rephrase what's the highest amount of money you could win in the lottery where you wouldn't feel comfortable breaking someone off. Like if you win a million dollars in the lottery and then someone's like, give me 10 grand, you might be like, I'm sorry, I just can't, I ain't got it on me right now. I mean, if they bought, if they bought me the ticket and I won a million. I'd give him 10 grand for sure. But if they were like my cousin and they were like, you just won a million dollars, give me 10 grand. I would be like, I don't know you.
if I want a hundred million, I'd be I'd be giving ten grand away to anybody who asked for like a couple of weeks at least. <laughs> but like at one million, that'd be. You'd have to be pretty close. But you know what's crazy? I bet if you won $100 million in the lottery, it would instantly change your frame of reference. You'd be like, yeah, I'm doing okay. But like, I would really be able to lean into philanthropy if I had like $250 million. Like $100 million, people start saying fucked up stuff like that. Hundred million, it's a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but it really doesn't go that far, you know. Seventeen million dollar house, you gotta have a vacation home, that's another seventeen million after that, and then you know, you gotta pay someone to administer your trust, and then you gotta have a little bit of spending money for yourself and college for the kids. When you look at that, you only got like sixty seven million dollars left, so it's really not as much money as you would think. Especially with inflation, you know. You're right, it is the Paul Bettany margin call monologue. Where he rattles off his, um, the, st the stuff he has to spend money on to maintain his lifestyle. And then he says, plus factor in $75,000 for cocaine and prostitutes. What percent would you break off? Well, here's the thing. For the person who bought the ticket, if it's a mega jackpot, I think you break them off 1%. Because that's a lot of money. If you win like $700 million, here's seven milli. Keep the change. Then don't ask for anything more. Why only 1%? Little bro, you just turned a $5 lottery ticket into $7 million. And you're like, I could have done better. It's the greatest trade in commerce history. <laughs> I'd break off the guy who sold me the ticket. If I win, if I win $500 million, dude who sold me the ticket is getting 0.5%. I would, I would put that in writing. Two and a half milli just for man in the counter that day. I'm losing it. People are saying like, this is stingy. What are you talking about? It's stingy. He got two and a half million dollars. He literally, no disrespect. He didn't do anything. The dude was literally just. <laughs> now he gets two and a half million dollars. Neither did you. Yeah, well, I bought the ticket. I won. He showed up to his job and is the luckiest man in the world. He just got two and a half million. It's not like he made the lottery. <laughs> you didn't even buy the ticket? It's, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, oh, fine, I'll give him zero. You know, this is why the, your, your greed has blinded you. First off, this situation is never going to happen, okay? Secondly, you're like, I would want more. No, you know what? Now you get nothing. Now I'm hoarding it. This is why we can't have nice things in North America. I would like to think that if I was the cashier that sold the winning lottery ticket, which I wouldn't remember at all because I'm selling like 10,000 lottery tickets a day, somebody came in and said, by the way, you sold me the winning ticket. Here's two and a half million dollars. I would be like, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I wouldn't be like, really? Come on. To his two and a half million dollars. He's like, why not five? Bro, you came into the store today with, with zero. You, you could leave with two and a half and you're trying to negotiate? That's insanity. Anyway, how was I doing on this run? <laughs> Not so bad. 
I'd settle for three. You'll, you'll settle for nothing and you'll like it. You'll think about that every day of the rest of your life when you're behind that counter. You'll be like, I could add two and a half million, but the greed that's inherent within all of us ruined it for me. Just because of that, I'm not breaking anybody off. Malf, I'd still break you off. I mean, if 500 million, if you don't break a couple of people off, you're kind of like a bad person. Plus, statistically speaking, you're probably going to lose it all anyway within like five or ten years. So you might as well like break off some people because you're going to zero no matter what. <laughs> You might as well change some lives in the process. And hey, maybe when you go broke, they'll break you off. Spoilers, they probably won't. They'll look at the money that you gave them and they'll be like, yeah, I know that he gave that to me, but then like he lost his own money due to like being a bad person. So we're not going to break him off. We're not going to repay the favor. I know how it is. Should have bought the can first. Should have held back, but you've thrown the punch. This doesn't seem great. Never mind. <laughs> Let's just have the feds break us all off a universal basic income instead. I, that, listen, I hear you, but that is heavy Pokemon go to the polls energy too. Do you think that single payer healthcare has Skibbity Riz W Gyat Ohio? We'll start with you, uh, Miss Haley. Never had a level three secretary bird before. Please end me. <laughs> oh, no, no. There will be like another maybe like 50, 60 years of, of the lore just passing you by. Of the vernacular just constantly changing in new and exciting ways. Did you ever finish your Pokemon Go special research to get the Master Ball? I did not. Um, I wasn't planning on doing the raids anyway. It just seemed like too much, quite frankly. But then when we went away in... Uh, so close. When we went away in October, I had no internet for like two weeks. So I said, obviously, I'm not going to play Pokemon Go. And then that was enough to knock me out of the habit. And I have not opened it since. But it's not, I don't see that as like a win. Like quitting Dota is a win. No offense, Quinn. Quitting Dota is a win. Because, unless you're a pro, in which case, you. I mean, again, you're locked into the ecosystem. As a normal person, quitting Dota is a win. Because you get your, like your life back. But Pokemon Go is not like a kind of game I think you really get addicted to. You just sort of like open it up while you're out for a walk. You haven't sent me a gift in weeks? It's true. But that's because I haven't... You should be happy for me. I haven't opened my phone. Also, like, Pokemon Go is kind of like a spring-summer game. Because in the wintertime, it gets... Well, depending on where you live, but it gets cold. It gets rainy. I don't, I don't like the, like I was taking some recreational walks in the, in the summertime. I was spending a lot of time outside with my kid. Now, like it's, the weather's a little bit more inhospitable. I really thought we had something there. Spotlight hours, 6 p.m. It's dark as fuck at 6. I'm really over, like if they're going to save daylight, we got to make them commit to it. I pick up my daughter from daycare at like 4.15. If it's cloudy, it's pitch black. I'm actually like driving home just blinded by the headlights of white BMW SUVs the whole time. It's insanity, man. It feels bad to get out of work and have it be 
nighttime. That's what maybe I get the idea that there's different different people are different, okay? But like I kind of feel like for me, I'm coming from the perspective of of working out. I like working out when it's still dark outside in the morning because it makes me feel like a fucking boss. I'm like no motherfuckers are doing this shit, waking up before the sun gets up, hopping on a two-hour Peloton ride. Like, I'm a, I'm a damn demon. I'm a beast. Get, like, that's, I'd like to think that that is what I would feel if I was going into the office and it was still dark. I would Because it almost feels like that, to me, it almost feels like that working time is, like, free. It's like, wow, I did two hours of work in the darkness. That gives me two extra hours of light when I'm free from the office. It's like you, if the sun's down or not up yet, you might as well be working. It's not like you're going to be outside like playing with a hula hoop or something like that. So I would rather it be like dark until like 11 a.m. like Iceland or something like that. And then like when you get out of the office, you still have like three hours of sunlight. This is more plus twos than I expected. That's for damn sure. Is this the loser culture Asmin was talking about? Mouth, what the hell are you... He's on one today, man. What a dry herb. It is true, in Iceland the sun does it does just go down at like 2 p.m. though. Except for like the times of the year that it's up like 19 hours a day and you're probably like, mm, not like that. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Well, one of these. Sunsets at nine. Awesome experience. Chibli, I'm happy for you. And that's also what it's like in Vancouver in the uh, summertime. In the summertime, like the sun, it'll be like sunset 8.45 p.m. But it takes like four hours for the sun to fully go down. No, not actually four hours. But it doesn't get dark until like 10, 10.30. It's beautiful. You have like an extended sort of twilight. Golden hour lasts three times longer. I love that somebody was saying Daylight Savings Time Wikipedia article is just a long list of the ways in which all this time change is harmful for society. <laughs> but it makes sense. Like, I mean... It's like Michael Sarah said, with no, res with no disrespect, <clears throat> with all due respect, you got no fucking idea what it's like to be the guy. You got no fucking idea what it's like. Every fucking thing you do affects every facet of every other fucking thing. I'm glad I'm not in politics. You're the dude who says the clocks go back uh, an hour next week. Guess what? Like because of you, four people die in a car accident. You want that blood on your hands? No, it's worth, it's worth. I don't want my kids to wait for the school bus when it's dark outside. I'd rather have them fucking be on the school bus coming home from school and have it already be dark outside. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's the same, you have the same amount of light every day. It's just how you distribute it, man. You're not creating more light, okay? Well, sorry, I got a little aggressive. Sorry, Chibli, I'm sorry you had to hear that. Chibli, I was talking you up. I, I said, and I mean this, you playing OSRS Guesser is as good as I've ever seen anybody be at anything. I should not have had the balloon break on you. This is the biggest day of my life. <laughs> I 
All the street lights are purple now. What's with that? I hear you. When they, you know what it is? All the lights are turning blue and purple. When I was a kid, every headlight used to be um, a dim, fuzzy yellow, and they didn't work. People were running into deers all the time. Uh, but it also meant that opposing traffic was able to actually drive relatively safely without constantly having their optic nerve hit with like a full action potential worth of stimulus. You know, your pupils get like you're driving. There's no cars. Your pupils get dilated as fuck. You're like, I, I need to be able to see anything. It's like one little photon of light is, is hitting you right on your rods and cones. And then all of a sudden, a Tesla Model Y comes around the corner with the high beams on, pointed directly at your optic stems. Your pupils have dilated to the size of a dinner plate. It sucks in all the light instantaneously. You, get like, you feel the impact like on the back of your head. Or is it just me? You can feel it? Oh, I'm glad that that's not just me. I thought maybe I was going a little crazy. But you can, you can sort of feel like something back, back here when the light hits you at, at the wrong spot, right on the iris. But now that even the street lights are turning blue and purple these days. I guess LEDs are like substantially more energy efficient, huh? That makes sense. <laughs> Can they make yellow LEDs? I will say this is like very Pacific Northwest coded and I apologize. I, a lot of people are saying I hate the environment. I don't hate the environment. We recycle, we compost. You know, I'm not out here like throwing aluminum bags out of my window when I'm eating like Viggo Mortensen in Green Book or something like that. But... We also need to evaluate the environmentalism versus the counterfactuals. In Vancouver and apparently in Seattle as well, they don't use reflective road paint because something in the reflective road paint is bad for the environment. I, in principle, that sounds fantastic. Let's use environmentally friendly paint. But it rains all the time, and at nighttime, in the rain, you can't see the lines on the road. How many... Human beings have died as a result of the non-reflective road paint, man. Please stop. We know it. It just, like, we need to be able to see the lines on the road. Bro, stop. It's nice. It's like one big lane. <laughs> I didn't think about it that way. Not to mention, you know, how many times have I done this bit? You know what pisses me off? Maybe the most, more than anything else when driving? Multiple lane road stopped at a traffic light. The left two lanes, both are only left turns. So it's not like one is turn left, one is straight. They're both turning left onto the same road. Why can none of you motherfuckers stay in the line that denotes your lane when you're turning left. Either the people in the left, left turning lane are gliding over into the right one, or the people in the right one are gliding over into the left one. It's kind of tricky. You just imagine the lines, man. And I don't know if this is just me getting older, but we need to have like a public advertising campaign to get people to start using their signal lights again. Because we have actually hit like, like the signal light is not respected anymore. It does not have skibbity riz. Nobody's using it. They're saying it's cringe to use your signal lights. Nobody's using them. We need to do, we need to change public opinion on the signal light, okay? Because it's, it's contagious. The less you see other people using signal lights, the less you feel like you need to use them because you're like, you feel like the last sane man on planet Earth. I'm still using it. People were making fun of me because I signal in the parking garage. They're like, you don't need the signal down here. There's no other cars. 
I, it's automatic. I signal whenever I'm going to turn my wheel because that's just what you do. It takes more cognitive energy to be like, oh, I don't need the signal on this one than it does to just signal. Signaling's pretty cool, man, in my opinion. We're bringing it back. We also need a PSA for zipper merging. That is true. People don't respect the zipper merge. But then, maybe I'm part of the problem. Because <laughs> I know, intellectually, that if it's a bumper to bumper traffic situation, you zipper merge. That being said, if I see an opportunity to merge in advance of the apex of the zipper, I just take it. Because I'm like, why would I? It's not that I want to get there faster, but I'm like, isn't this making it easier on the people downstream? Because I got in without having to get to the zipper. As long as you didn't make anyone else slow down, it's okay. I don't know. I'm taking some heat for that one, but that's okay. That being said, I know this is like the exact reason people don't signal either. Um, but I, most of the time you zipper merge, people are nice and let you in. But that requires me to rely on somebody else being nice on the road, which is a, that's hard for me to do because I've been burned a few times. So if I see an opportunity to safely merge with my own impetus rather than relying on somebody behind me who may want to actually just kill me, then I take it. Because fuck you. <laughs> I don't want to have to rely. Because then like if you don't get in on the first zipper merge, like if somebody says, no, I want to get to my destination two seconds faster, I'm more important than you, then it's already started like flow. It's like a ketchup bottle, you know? It's hard to get like one drop of ketchup out. As soon as the flow starts, like four cars, like Peter forward. Anyway, you should zipper merge. I'm just saying. Peter? I'm saying fuck it, we ball. You know what? Cedar, cedar. I think that's a great comment. I think the lack of trust is where it all comes from. Drivers see each other as obstacles and threats rather than as other people. I think that's definitely true, and I think I'm contributing to it. <laughs> But we, I didn't start the fire. It was always burning as the world's been turning, okay? But I, will, I think there's like, there's two different ways you look at it, okay? Either every other driver is an obstacle um, because you want to get where you're going faster or every other driver is a threat because you've seen insane people do insane things on the road. And I am of the opinion that every other driver could be insane. So as a result, I try to drive defensively. But not so defensively that I'm a complete dweeb. But I will say, there was, I read a comment once, it was on Reddit, and it changed my worldview. Now, old ones will know this is a, a rehashed bit, but it was, it was an r slash Vancouver thread that was like, why do people let people who speed down the turning lane merge into the straight lane at the end, skipping like 20 cars worth of traffic? And then like the top comment was like, if I was the president, they would be killed. And it was like, it was like base, 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 base. But then like the second comment, they were like, I just do it because like life's too short and it's not that big of a deal. But also like, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're late for something important or like they're trying to get their 
spouse to the hospital because they're pregnant or like their kid is like sick or something like that. So I just say, you know what? It's not worth my time to be the judge of that. If they want to come in, then I'm just going to let them in. And I was like, that's a great philosophy. I've tried to, uh, to internalize that a little bit and to, to some effect, not the perfect effect, but still. Got to get to work so I can claim the two and a half million. I'd let you in. I'd, I'd, I'd break you off a piece of the traffic there so you could get to work and get the two and a half million that the lottery ticket winner is breaking you off. I think like just one of the things you can think is that like, you know, at the end of the day, it's just driving. So like maybe this dude's an asshole. Maybe that dude's an asshole. But like, what are you going to I'm just trying to get to the real Canadian superstore, bro. I'm not going to make it like my whole personality. said based. I was waiting for the flow of bastes. <laughs> do you sit on the happy guy side of the bus? I think I do. I think I do sit on the happy guy side of the bus. For someone who complains a lot, I actually have a fairly sunny disposition. I tend to see the best in things. Complaining is the happy side. That might be true. Maybe, the, uh, here you go, librarian. It's like the happy side, of the, the sad side of the bus is me and someone asks, how was your day? And I said, pretty good. And then the happy side of the bus is someone says, how was your day? And I say, you won't believe the shit that I saw at the real Canadian superstore today. There's something about that. There's like some, there's a philosophical spectrum there. When was the last time you were on a bus? Um, it's been a while. There's no doubt about that. It's probably been four years, maybe five years. I remember once Kate had an orchestra performance and she took our car because they had to like do the rehearsal bef before the performance, but then I went to the performance. I had to take the bus to the performance. I'm assuming we're not talking like airport shuttles, you know, stuff like that. I did take the bus to the function. I mean, I'm not trying to get r slash fuck cars mods to like be mad at me, but buses suck because it's like all the problems of cars, but like none of the positives. Like if I'm going to be in, you would be mad at this if you want. If I'm going to be in traffic like a bus, then I would rather just be in my car so I could be singing. <laughs> if you don't own a car, that's based. But if I, I have the option, I could either go to the, I could get on the bus and get stuck in the same traffic I'm going to get stuck in with my car, but surrounded by other people, or I could just be in my car. <laughs> if it's like I could take the train or my car, I, would, I love taking the train, man. You don't have to worry about parking. It drops you off at a station that's almost always near stuff. The train is sick. It's a model of, it's a marvel of modern engineering. The bus is like, it does its best and I respect it for it. But it's no train. Like when there's a lot of traffic and you're on the train, you don't even know, man. When there's a lot of traffic and you're on a bus, you're like, Fuck. You can look at your phone. That's true. It is nice to look at your phone in traffic without the risk of, like, you know, killing somebody. I think you're overrated. So buses are only bad because of cars? Yeah, you know, precisely. But like, that's the reality of the situation. I know 19 year olds are like, why don't you just make cars illegal? It's like, I don't have that kind of power, motherfucker. I don't even get to choose what we eat for dinner most of the time. 
I'm a, I'm a, a spectator in my own life, okay? I know you're like, well, do something about it. Fucking wait till you're my age. I'll ask you the same question. I'll be like, how's that outlawing car situation going for you? Oh, it turns out people need to get to work far away from where they live. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> turns out we already built all the, we already put all the concrete down. We already built all the roads everywhere. So it would take a lot of work to rip them up. No, really? I didn't consider that 20 years ago when you were being militant on my ass. I got nothing against the bus. The bus is operating within the system as best as it can. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't have that kind of power. I can't even enact change on the website that I'm on right now. They keep saying, hey, do you take this 10-minute survey? We want to know how our partners feel. And then I fill it out, and then shit just gets worse, man. <laughs> Almost all the changes, I was like, strongly disagree, strongly disagree. Any other comments? Please don't do that. A week later, you won't believe it. <laughs> you won't believe what we just announced. The Torment Nexus. Okay, you're gone. I don't know what I'm going to put in your stead, though. You can hang for now. It's interesting. Would you break off the CEO of Twitch if you won a million dollars in the lottery? A milli? No. A billy? No. No, I'm not breaking any CEO of anything off. That's just, it's not even a Twitch issue. No CEOs getting broken. They are, society already broke them off. No disrespect. I'm not saying you didn't work for it. I'm saying you already got broken off. Compensatorily speaking. And I know what you're going to say, what about the engineers? No. But that's just because I don't know them. If I had to choose, sure, I'd probably break off the engineers or something. I don't know. If I had to, if they, if they were like in order to claim this was like a Brewster's Millions type situation. What about chat? Um, I'd love to. It just seems like really unfeasible to kind of like facilitate it. You know what I mean? Like I just don't see any way to realistically do it. So sorry. I just don't, I don't see it happening. What about DL Guiga? No, because then at this point, you have to understand that, that in my opinion, to maintain like a moral level of consistency, which you may not be concerned with, but it might govern the way that I would behave in a situation like this. Um, in order to be morally consistent, breaking it off is not like a one-to-one -one relationship. Breaking it off is like expanding a circle and everyone in the circle qualifies for getting broken off. The circle is determined by the strength of the relationship between us. Me and the Elguiga, we have a witty repartee. He's, he's dead to me because he hasn't been in chat for like five days. But um, if I extend it to the Elguiga, then it's like all VIPs are getting broken off a piece. Everybody in the egg carton is getting broken off a piece. All the other parents at daycare are getting broken off a piece, you know, like et cetera. It's like the circle just becomes too big or maybe the piece becomes too small at that point. Easy, we're getting broke off. <laughs> Just tell me what your PayPal, PayPal email address is, okay? PayPal. Pay, pay him. Pay that man his money on PayPal. But I'm going to just tell you again. Try not to worry about it too much because I don't play the lottery. So you will not get broken off. The only way it's going to happen is if I get given a lottery ticket and then win the jackpot which is infinitesimal odds and then keep in mind even if i did win the jackpot i would then have to break off the person who bought me the ticket in the first place meaning that there's less to break you off in the future 
we're all getting rich. I don't think you're listening <laughs> to what I'm saying, okay? Canucks 50-50 though. That would require, I know we, again, we've been through this before as well. That would require me to play the 50-50, which I would only do for like 20 bucks if I was at a game. You will not catch me being a, the kind of degenerate gambler that is playing the Canucks 50-50 from home. I don't care that they built a system that enables it to happen. Hey, Valentine, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. As far as I'm concerned, the 50-50 is something, it's a charitable donation you make at a game that you attend just to give you a little bit of entertainment. You're like, hey, we're losing 4-0, but we got 10 50-50 tickets, so there's still a reason to stay until, you know, 10 minutes are left in the third. I, you will not catch me buying 50-50 tickets at home because I don't even understand, like, in the arena, they announce the 50-50 number. If you buy it at home... What, do you just got to wait till like after the game? They re or do you just take your stuff to the London drugs and scan it or something? I don't... It just... Plus... Charity workers don't... Mute the stream for a second, okay? Isn't it bad EV to play the 50-50? Because like 50% 50 of the money goes to charity. So like the winner only gets 50%. I understand that the way that a lottery works, you know, is like when you buy a lottery ticket, it's not like you win the pot of everybody who bought the lottery tickets, but I don't think they're taking 50% out at the top just for administration and, and like, you know, road improvements and stuff like that. Like it's, it's worse than the casino. That, at least a blackjack, you're like 52, 48 or something like that, right? Now, the casino is not a charity, technically. They're breaking you off 50? Why are you complaining? Because <laughs> I bought the ticket! Yes, okay, if you were, you tell the, tell the charity workers you can unmute now. And we'll go three, two, one. And that's why they're the heroes of our community. Welcome back. It's almost time for Jackbox. I don't know how much more solo banter I can keep up with. I genuinely do, I, I'm sane, but I do think this is why most streamers go crazy. Because you really are just like, if you stream 12 hours of World of Warcraft a day, first off, you're playing World of Warcraft for 80 hours a week, which is already enough to make any sane person go insane. But then also, you're talking to yourself and fielding the most insane questions of all time. So you just go, like, you're, you're like a, a, a comet that has breached orbit in a solar system. You're just flying through space governed by your existing momentum. You know, there's no other gravitational body that's like hey reel it in a little bit come back to sanity you know it's like you just keep going further and further and then the more you get out into deep space the less you can relate to the the normies so you get even more spiraling out into deep space i need jackbox to bring me back man i need to come back to sanity I don't know what to buy either because like all the animals are too good to sell but not good enough to carry me. That's why I talk to the people in the checkout line at Costco. Keeps me grounded. Listen, that's based, Giga, but I will say Costco, one of the only stores where I feel like the cashiers are instructed not to do small talk. Like they're all business. Sometimes the scanner will do small talk with the person that's loading your groceries into the cart. But that's more like two like grandpas building the Empire State Building in the 1930s, like just venting some steam while they're, you know, slinging up girders. They are not talking to me. The only thing they say to me is, where's your card? And then sometimes they don't even say like that your total is this. They just like point to the machine and go like, you're up. 
But I can't even be mad at them because they're fucking cracked on this scanner, bro. It takes like, like the, if you have 30 items from Costco, they're getting that shit all the way through, scanned and put into the cart at like three seconds per item. If you get like two things at GameStop, you're there for an hour and a half. They have how fast can you scan items contests among Costco employees? That's crazy. Capitalism has done some good things. Wow, what are you doing? Hey, come on, listen. They're, it, the profit motive has incentivized them to scan so fast, man. It's saving the average customer like 30 seconds times 10,000 customers. That's like a year. No, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm a socialist and I agree. Now you did say to an extent after that, but I'm gonna take it, okay? Let the secretary bird go. One person is backseating in the pro-capitalism bit. They must know what they're talking about. Everybody else is stun-locked, okay? I, I trust you just based on your dedication. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Never been to Costco is too intimidating. Can I say something you might not expect? I understand that and I think that is fair. Um, I think that it is going to Costco is a journey. The parking lot's wild. The people inside do not respect uh, the flow of traffic. They're abandoning shit nonstop. They're lining up 20 people deep just to get a sample of something they've eaten 30 times before in their life. Like it is a, it's a store where you gotta, it helps to have a game plan. Can I say something that is, you could take it as a bad faith thing, but I'm triple vaxxed. I'm just gonna put that out there in advance. I keep seeing a new kind of person at Costco and there's probably 250 of them in the store every time I'm in there. Guy who wears a mask to the Costco, but pulls it down to get a free sample of like 50 milliliters of iced tea. He's like, I really don't want to get sick and I really don't want to get anybody else sick, but I just can't resist this Kirkland Signature lemon iced tea. Like it's... <laughs> That's me. I've just got some questions. Like, I, I respect the mask in 2023. I see what you're doing. You're, I think you're doing a good thing for society. I don't want to get you sick, and I don't want to catch whatever you got either, okay? But at the same time, I think that I would just be like, I know what Tropicana orange juice tastes like, and I would probably just push my card elsewhere. But, but maybe that's just, maybe I haven't considered that, you know, we should assume the best in people instead of the worst in people. I'm assuming the worst in people. I should assume the best in people. We are going to lose this one, by the way. Assume the pragmatist stance. Why? My brain is so cooked that that sounds like a skibbity riz to me. Like the pragmatist stance, it sounds like it's related to the phantom tax. I did that on purpose. It was very, very smart, very clever. You know what you were doing with that one. We're still alive. You will find us in Penjamin City. <laughs> I knew it was over for me, by the way, like cognitively, when um, there was a discourse on iPad kids. And I believe, you know what, I'll just find the comment, because it was in the disc, it was, it was good natured discourse, it wasn't rude discourse, but I believe, here's what I said, because <clears throat> we do let our kids, or sorry, our kid, use the iPad from time to time. 
I try to make sure she she's also using like books and coloring books and stuff like that and that the iPad is like edutainment. But here's what I said. Listen, I'm just saying iPads didn't exist when I was a kid and one in four kids still went off the Benjamin if they consumed Red 40. Tell me I'm wrong. Now also tell me this is a sentence that is respectable for a 34 year old to drop. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that people see like one insane 10 year old and they're like, it's the iPad that rotted their brain. And I'm like, nah, man, one in four kids when I was 10 was crazy too. And we were like, oh, it's the food dye. Or like, oh, they, they've had too much sugar. No, some kids are just crazy, man. I'm not saying the iPad is necessarily helping things. <laughs> but they're 10, bro. They're all, you were crazy when you were 10 too. You're just like, you're blessed to not remember it. And so am I. Hey, Tomo. Oh my God, we lived again. My mom always blamed Harry Potter for the hyper kid. <laughs> it's those damn books, man. People are always saying that. That kid's crazy. He must be extraordinarily well read for his age. I'm just saying if Chibli was there, Kick Asia wouldn't have gone down like that. Uh, this team just looks too advanced for me to stand a chance to defeat. Yeah, there's there's no shot. It's the same joke every time. Okay, we have 10 minutes. I can do this. 10 minutes, that's one minute per piece. You got to fa factor in random banter time. No, we're going banterless. Banterless Brooklyn. Starring Ed Norton. You think Ed Norton uses McAfee? Ed Norton strikes me as the kind of guy who doesn't own a computer. All right, banterless run failed. We restart. <laughs> We went banterless for one second. It's a new record. <laughs> like there are celebrities who own a computer. I just don't see Ed Norton being one of them. I, he definitely has a phone. I see Ed Norton having a phone just because like you kind of have to in the modern day. But I don't think he, he certainly, if he has a computer, he doesn't have a desktop. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know why specifically Ed Norton. He just seems like the kind of guy who wouldn't own a desktop computer. You think Lindsay Lohan owns a computer? I'm gonna go ahead and say that I, my personal take is that Lindsay Lohan does not have a desktop computer. She seems like a phone Andy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I could see Lindsay Lohan having uh, a Windows Surface tablet at best. Laptop Lindsay, Lindsay Lowen is not here. She doesn't respect me. Laptop Lindsay, she's always playing Purple Place on her laptop. She's always playing Spider Solitaire. Sad, sad, Spider Solitaire. You know what, if we're gonna play fast and live young, cause bad girls do it well, this is how we're gonna do it. Yeah, sure, end turn with excess gold. Do I look like I give a shit? <clears throat> Nicholas Cage? I see Nicholas Cage having a desktop PC for sure. Now, I'm not going to say that I see him using it on the regular. But I definitely see Nicolas Cage as the kind of guy who could have a gaming rig.
because he does also own a dinosaur skull, right? He owns like a T-Rex skull. I don't mean for this bit to come across as anti-science. I know I've, I've towed the line there a little bit today. I'm not trying to catch your reputation, especially with the mask versus free sample debate. Um, is there a possibility, not a probability, but is there a possibility that um, in like a hundred years, everything we per currently think we know about dinosaurs will be proven as false? Because like the way I understand it, there were dinosaur pieces. <laughs> I'm not cut out for this man. Uh, assembled at museums of anthropology in like the 1900s. And then like after a few decades, people were like, oh yeah, we found new fossils. And it turns out like all those puzzles we assembled, that's not actually how they looked at all. Like this, they look completely different than the way that we put them together. And then, because I see people saying it in chat, I'm glad you walked into this one because I had it pre-planned. I pre-moved you. I pre-fired around the corner in Dust 2. People are like, oh, but that's because people were stupid back then. But like in 150 years, 2023 is going to be like our version of like 1807 or whatever. Skibbity, Ohio. So like... Maybe they'll look back on like the way we assembled like an Apatosaurus skeleton and they'll be like, they really thought that fucker was like 175 feet tall. That's just ridiculous. The thing, it turns out that was actually bones from like a 18 whales that washed up on, onto the shore. They were actually stupid back then. Yeah, but they weren't though. They were the smartest people that had ever lived at the time. Obviously, looking back now, they had rocks in their head. <laughs> but we will probably, unless society completely collapses, we will be stupid relative to our great-great-grandchildren the same way they're kind of stupid to us. My great-great-grandfather, who worked as a fur trader on the Hudson's Bay in minus 35 degree temperatures for 20 years. What do you say fuck me for? I'm just saying, dummy. Listen, you don't know shit about dinosaurs, Gramps. Anyway. So is there a chance that, like, maybe dinosaurs didn't exist? <laughs> Not where I'm going with it, I'm just saying. Huge. Oh, we're gonna be on time. Come on, man, give me the 10 piece. It's kind of crazy we have fossils at all. No, it, I, I mean this not in like a, I'm not trying to make anybody cry, but did you see, I don't know how it got tweeted into my feed, but the, the tweet of the guy who got a tattoo of preserved children's illustrations that got like swallowed up in a Danish bog in the 13th century. There's, these are like drawings that a, a child in the 13th century made. They're like nine or ten years old. And then somehow they, maybe they drew it on bark or something and then the, the bark got dropped in a bog and the bog preserved it. This is weirdly like melancholy because it humanizes people from history as real people. Instead of just, like on an intellectual level, you know that those were real people. But like the idea of a child in the 13th century like drawing graffiti and not just like existing all the time in like a leather cap with like a bag full of rye grain on his back is crazy. 
ripped to that dude, he would have absolutely loved Skibbity Toilet. But like unironically. <laughs> He, and he should have been! He was like 10, he should have been loving Skibbity Toilet. That's the age! We don't need this. Skibbity Chamber Pot. Oh man, you should save that, that could go hard. Skibbity Chamber Pot. I don't see how this could lose. There are notes from medieval monks ranting about their cat knocking over a bottle of ink. That's the thing, right? I always think about that. Not even like in ancient history. Oh, we're fucked. I honestly thought that run had a chance. I think that way about like World War II. You know, like in 1939 to 1945, in my head, it was World War II the whole time. What were people doing? Bro, what do you think they were doing? It was World War II. There was probably like some motherfuckers that were like at home and they were just bored. They had the audacity to be bored in World War II. Probably writing in their journal. Ah, oh, didn't have a great day today. Oh, the train was like three minutes late and I lost my shoelace or something like that. That's crazy. It is crazy that the older I get, the further away World War II gets, but also like the closer it gets. Because when I was like 10 and that shit was 50 years ago, I was like, that's ancient history. Now that I'm 35 and it's like almost 100 years ago, I'm like, that shit was like, it's like my parents, parents kind of, like my, somewhere in between my great grandparents and my grandparents. <laughs> 